Even though we've seen moisture lately, the drought is likely behind a dramatic increase in the number of Oklahoma horses diagnosed with pigeon fever, a disease once confined to the West Coast. It got its name because, like a pigeon, has a large chest, so the abscesses tend to most commonly form here in this region. So that's how it got its name, but they're basically abscesses caused by a particular organism that's called Carinibacterium. Dr. Todd Holbrook is an equine specialist at the Center for Veterinary Health Sciences at OSU. He says the bacteria thrives in dry soil and is spread by flies and horse-to-horse -horse contact. It's been documented up to eight months that it, it can live in the soil, so it um, probably does prefer certain types of soil and, and you know, we certainly had a really long fly season this year because of the warm winter that we had. The fly bite dermatitis that you'll see sometimes is usually right about in here. Okay, and they're usually it's a hairless and with maybe small scabs. Um, and then lymphatic infections. The <clears throat> lymphatic tracts tend to run down this, the inside of the legs. Dr. Holbrook says 90% of horses with pigeon fever have external abscesses that can be drained. Really, they, they can form on either side, but there's a lot of tissue, deep tissue from here. You know. The other 10% have internal problems and may appear weak, stiff, or lame because of the swollen tissue. As far as internal abscessation and or the uh, infection in the lymphatic system or the lymphatic form of the disease, um, so antibiotics are really important for that. Um, but other, you know, when they can be drained, uh, in addition, so sometimes surgical approaches to different organs, depending on where the abscess is at, can be a part of that, a necessary part of that treatment as well. Fly control is essential for prevention, along with thorough cleaning after treatment and isolation of infected horses. Experts say cattle can also get pigeon fever, but it's not dangerous to humans.